Sea of Thieves Season 10 is finally here, and with that comes guilds. Looking at it might be a little bit intimidating, so in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything about guilds, like how to make one, how to invite people, how to manage your guilds with worlds and permissions, and the different rewards for increasing your guild's reputation. The very first thing you need to start a guild in Sea of Thieves is a captain's ship. If you have one of those, great. And if not, then you're a broke ass Once you have a captain's ship pledged, it's time to crack open the imaginative side of your brain. You'll have an array of options to customize your guild. You'll pick the guild crest, then the mark, then the colors, then the name, then the motto. You can customize the name however you want, but the models are pre-written for you, so your motto can't be subscribe to Warnout Sneaker, no matter how much it bums you out. And if you suffer from the anxiety of not wanting to commit to an option, which let's be honest, it's why you're alone, you can buy a renaming deed like you do with Captain Ships, so you can change it however many times you want for $5. Once you figured out your guild branding, the last thing to do is you'll need to pledge a captain ship to your guild. Congratulations, you have your very first guild. Now, it's not a strong guild without guild mates, so how do you invite players to it? In your guild, you can have up to 24 people at once, and none of them have to have a captain ship, only you do. To grow your guild, you can either invite your Xbox and Steam friends, or if you find a random pirate on the seas who you want to join your guild, you can use this all new guild invite emote that allows the offered player to inspect your guild details, like how many people you have in your guild, and how many ships have been pledged thus far. If the player decides to join, they'll have to make sure your guild is not already full, and that the offered player isn't already belonging to three guilds. Now that you have a good amount of people in your guild, it's time to figure out roles and permissions. If you're a Discord mod, skip this part because you already have a feel for this, but otherwise, there are three roles. The guild owner, which is the person who created the guild, guild leaders, and guild mates. The guild owner can customize the permissions that the different roles have, like whether they can change guild roles, invite new recruits to the guild, or kick guild members. For instance, you can set it up to be the guild owner can invite and kick guild members and change guild roles, while guild leaders can only invite and kick guild members, and guild mates can only invite people. This is a pretty standard structure, but you can customize it however you want. Now, when you finally start setting sail on a gilded ship, you'll have your old options, either sail on an open crew or a closed crew, but now you can sail in a guild crew. Guild crew means that if you have an available space in your boat while sailing, anyone in your guild can join your session without an invite. If you get off, you can turn on a feature that will allow your guildmates to be able to sail your captain boat while you're offline. They can then progress your captain milestones on your boat while you're offline. But don't worry, if they decide to change some of your cosmetics, they won't be safe, so you won't have to switch them back when you get back on. Now you have a guild full of people with permissions and roles, and you have a fleet of boats ready to set sail. But how do you level up your guild? You and your guild members level up the guild reputation by turning in loot and doing general actions. Once you reach 100 levels of reputation, your guild can earn a distinction. Every distinction will upgrade your guild crest and plaque, showing your distinction to whoever sees it. And at reputation 15, your guild will be given access to guild emissary status. At the Sovereign Tents, you can vote to throw up a guild emissary flag. As with every emissary, throwing it up and selling loot at the Sovereigns will give you a boost in gold and reputation for every piece. And completing actions will level up your emissary flag all the way to level 5, but be careful because just like Reapers, once you reach level 5, you'll be marked on the map for everyone to see and we know how much you hate PvP. Lastly, once you reach a certain level of reputation in your guild, you can wear outfits for role-playing purposes themed to a navigator, chef, cannoneer, and helm. If you ever decide to leave that guild though, then your outfits will be taken out of your clothing chest and you'll have to earn it back in another guild. And also come follow me on my Twitch where I might be streaming Sea of Thieves right now. And if you want to learn the best cannons to use in Sea of Thieves, then click on this video right here and learn all about it.